So I borrowed this from someone else, but here it goes. You're on a first date. Very pretty lady. You take her to a nice restaurant. Right before you order, you say, by the way, I'm a vegan. And then when it comes time for you to order, you order the sirloin steak medium raw. And when she gets confused and says, hold on a second, I thought you were vegan. You look at her and you say, I'm flawed, okay? If she doesn't get the joke, then she's not right for you. I swear to God, I'm going to try this one of these days. If I ever get a first date. Either she gets the joke and she's the one, or I just remain a uh, technically an incel, involuntary celibate, but isn't like aren't aren't most guys technically incels because most guys want to not be celibate. But they are. I, I don't know statistically. Um, count up all the guys in this country, and uh, what would the ratio of of single to non single guys be? I don't know. I, I feel like even even guys who are in relationships went for a time without being one, so. Ah, women. Can't live with them. Can't shoot them. I mean, you can. But it's not recommended. But, you know, um, if you ask a grammar Nazi if you can kill someone, and you say... I really hate this guy. Can I kill him? Please? Do you give me permission? Can I? And Grammar Nazi says, I don't know. Can you? I used to know a guy who uh, who would say that. The thing about can can I versus may I is I if, if you're saying, if you say, can I get have the salt? That actually sounds more natural than may I have the salt. May I have the salt sounds formal. And if you um, are being overly formal with people, um, it makes it sound like you're not being genuine. You're not really just being willing to let your guard down. And you're basically implying that the other person needs you to be formal, you know, like you're trying to impress them or something. Uh, so, may I shoot this guy? If somebody said that that to me, I would say, I don't know, may you? Um, I never say may, I always say, can, can I get the salt? And, and it's, even if it's technically not grammatically incorrect, correct, linguistically and logically it does make sense you're saying saying can i is you're saying is it possible for me to have the salt implying that your ability ha to have the salt whether you can or can't have the salt is dependent on whether or not that person hands it to you so you are implying that you are still communicating the message that I need this all. So who cares about um, grammar? I used to date a grammar Nazi. She was horrid. She thought that uh, because she was good at noticing grammatical mistakes that made her intelligent because she understood grammar, but she wasn't a good writer. It's more important to know how to use language to express ideas than look for technicalities. And here's an interesting uh, thing about correct gram grammatical forms. Octopus. Um, 
people say the plural is octopi because that would be correct in Latin. Now, I heard somebody actually make a very, I don't remember what the argument was, but they made the case that no, octopi is not correct, it's octopus, and based on the origin of the word. But here, here's the thing, though. Even if a word was originally um, a Latin word, and now it's being used in English, once it's being used in English, it is not being used... It is no longer a Latin word. It is a Latin word to a Latin speaker, but to an English speaker, it's an English word. So you would want to apply the rules of English grammar on it. Right? And uh, grammar is in a state of flux. And if you try to hold on to like stiff rules about grammar, um, like may I versus can I then anyway so yeah so I've covered uh, jokes and dating and uh, grammar rules um The ability to express an idea logically, linguistically matters more than whether you follow rules that somebody has set down in a book. Like, what I say to you, makers of Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, um, you probably have more authority to define words than I do. But guess what? Um, it is also possible for a word to change in meaning in the um, public sphere in a way that actually is the definition actually makes more sense or it makes just as much sense as when it's changed from. And so um, there are two ways to determine the definition of a word. There's common usage and technical usage. And uh, in some and and that the use of that can uh, can change and both can can have validity in the context in which they're used. Um, the term dinosaur in common usage amongst most people, it just means a big scaly reptilian creature um, but in, in technical terms it, it includes things like birds um, so I don't know where I'm going with that yeah so I also want to I'll, I'll discuss this later on um, I've been thinking about this uh, bullshit redefinition of racism and how there is already a currently accepted definition of what racism is and that's essentially prejudice based on there there are more than one but you know one is just prejudice against someone based on race and they come up with these additional qualifications and you and they just demand that a new definition is used even though it actually doesn't make sense and is arbitrary and the argument for that new definition is not made in good faith it's done for ideological purposes. And so I refuse to accept that definition. And if I'm on a date with somebody who doesn't get my joke or who is vegan and is offended for my choice of caloric intake, and who insists I utter the phrase, Black Lives Matter. I have no problem saying Black Lives Matter, but I, I the reason I was thinking about that is because there are these videos of crowds of BLM protesters going up to diners in restaurants, an outdoor, the outdoor patio, 
and they would go up to them and they would surround them and say, say Black Lives Matter. Say it. Say it. You say it. And and they refused to. And one of the ladies, they were saying that was like, all right, that's all I got to say. There's not going to be